Well, I'm back and I hope you are too. And if you are, thank you very much for being here. And if it's your first time, thank you very much for clicking on the thumbnail and watching the video. I appreciate it as well. Mary G left a comment asking about how my Latoria type dendrobiums and my nobilis are doing in semi-hydro. So um, yeah, because I'm in the phase of checking all my pots and seeing what needs to be done, I have actually thought that I'm going to also film this, seeing as we've had a look at some cattleyas, we've had a look at the epidendrums, and I have some Latoria types. They have been in their pot two years, my Roy Tokonaga, and my Dendrobium Alexandre crossed with Polysema. That's two years. This one I got as a gift from Luke, which is the more Memoria Christa Erdmann, Thysiflorum Wilmington School. I just wanted to show it, but it's only been in the pot one year. So I'm not going to change anything about it. But uh, yeah, this is the growth of this year. And just have to make sure that the new growth, wherever it's going to come out, of course, the only adjustment I may need to make is reorientate it in the pot. But I only have one nobly type because those are the purchases that you do when you need to get a new orchid and oh, it's there on the rescue table. So why not? It is doing quite well in semi-hydro. It took to it very, very quickly and easily. However, my culture mistake was regarding when I saw some nubbins, I started to fertilize. So I got keikis in the first year. And now I had some fantastic blooming from the keikis, which I plonked into the semi-hydro. And they are growing their own new growths now, right here. So I've lost two growths, but that is not because of the growing setup. That is because of mealybugs. I did not cut this one back because I wanted it to grow roots and then see if from the base something else will grow. Another growth I cut back because it was taken out by mealybugs and started to get squishy. Mealybugs and dendrobiums. Moth larvae and dendrobiums. Copper fungicide and dendrobiums. Dendrobiums seem to be a little science of their own. So anyway, the point of this exercise is to get into those pots and see what's up. I will not be touching the no nobly, there is no need. Those keikis have been in there one year and it's not like it's looked, it doesn't look to me as if it needs anything done to it at this stage. But Roy Tokonaga and the Alexandre cross with Polysema. We're going to look at those and see how they've done two years in semi-hydro. The top looks fine, minus the damage, but let's look and see what the inside of the pot has done. When I say I'm going around all my pots to see what needs to be done, if anything, what I do is check, of course, what's going on at the surface of the pot. And then I also um, actually take the pot out and squeeze it. And if it's rock hard, yeah, something needs to be done. And this one is rock hard, pretty much. I also brought some bigger pots because I'm gonna bump them up. Even if I do a radical cleanup, I will be bumping them up so that I don't have to do this again next year. And if I have to do this again next year, happy days. That means it's done really well. But yeah, I squeeze the pot when I take it out of the mask, check the consistency. And that pretty much is an indicator for me if it's rock hard, something needs to be done. In my video on how to grow in semi-hydro indefinitely, Norman uh, left a comment and I, I will reply to it, but in case he doesn't see this video, but regarding putting them in glass containers, yeah, it's difficult enough to dislodge from a plastic container. But what you can do is take one of those baking spatulas or pancake spatulas, but they're flat on both sides. They're like a, you know, narrow tongue-like shape and uh, to flip crepes or something like that. And uh, wedge that down the interior margin, like around the perimeter, and then wiggle a little bit as you go. That should help. 
in dislodging the lecker. Okay, I do have some root, new root growth there, so I'm gonna tip it out the opposite direction. When I um, got this orchid, it's from Schwerta. I was sitting watching the Ryder Cup of 2018 and getting all the moss out of that old pot. And these roots were like glass. They completely snapped and broke, all of them. Which was a shocker for me when I was repotting it or cleaning it up. I almost had every root compromised. It was a nightmare. Even with soaked sphagnum moss, it was a nightmare. And still, I put it into this setup and I thought, yep, that's it. I'm not going to be able to grow this. Well, as you can see, it has grown really well in this setup and it is very pot bound. So Roy Tokonaga or any crosses of that kind and Lekka, I see no problems whatsoever. Okay, I get to use my microfiber again. Cool, it, it did not eat the microfiber. That's one bonus. I did already prepare my other pots with new microfiber, but then I shall take it out. Save it for another one when the day comes. I have a gardener working in the background. I hope I can filter that out. But I think, touch wood, um, I think I've got my audio issues sorted out. So nobody needs to think that they're on some kind of a roller coaster ride of audio. I hope that that has proven itself to be true. There will be a new support in here. The orchid as such doesn't need it. I train my growth based on light. But in this case, I always would say because it's a tall and can be a lanky part, if something were to go wrong, then I would definitely prefer to have a support just in case to be able to train it back in. This is a good root system. After two years, it's also branching. And you can see there are some dead ones, which are hardly surprising considering the amount of damage I did when I potted it up. So based on that, and with the confidence of knowing how vigorous a grower this is, oh, it ate one microfiber, I am going to go to town on this root ball and create some space and aeration. Are you gonna let go? This looks really, really, ouch, right? Ah, you wouldn't do that on a normal days out, but uh, again, I'm not concerned. Okay, so let's have a look. I will put up a timestamp to when I'm done with this. If you'd like to skip ahead, the timestamp will be in the description. Other than that, I'm just going to show you how easy these break. I only, I only pulled on one part and I got three. These are glass. These roots are glass. If you're working with a Roy Tokonaga or anything similar of a cross from them, just know it's not you. And basically, if you're going to change media and you're going to do something about it, there's only one way. Be brave. Just be brave. Yes, timing is also of essence. But uh, my, my potting up, my first ever potting up of this orchid was in September, end of September of uh, 2018, heading into winter. And it didn't skip a beat. So now what I'm trying to focus on is trying to get into this part here with the dead roots 
so that I can give that a good cleanup. And uh, with that said, I am now first week of September and I have another three weeks to go easily and, and more. I'm not concerned about the root health of this orchid, but you can see how easily they just snap. Like I said, be bold, be brave, don't worry about it. There's nothing you can do. You can be as gentle with this as you want. It's not going to serve any purpose whatsoever. It's just not gonna help. I was so, it took me like three hours to try and pick off the moss gently. Uh, yeah, no chance. No chance whatsoever. There's nothing easy about taking care with the root system that has glass roots. If you have one of these, let me know if you have a similar experience and uh, what you think and how does yours grow also. A lot of people grow this in sphagnum moss because they are so thirsty. In the summer, I'm filling the reservoir twice, twice a week. That's what it needs. And you can see in here, my initial dead roots from a long time ago. They were just stumps. And I obviously was so freaked out, I gave up because I still have sphagnum moss in there. Not today. I'm not intimidated by this anymore. Yep, I stopped. And even though I stopped and there was organic matter in there, it didn't skip a beat. Because that could also be the case. You know, you've got a root system and you are, you've got inorganic media and you're mixing it with organic and it becomes a very moist, wet, permanent wet environment. Yeah, it can get you in trouble, but not with this one, so don't worry about it. Now, if it's mid-December and it's cold and all that, I would say, okay, you know, let's be reasonable about what I'm sharing here. Timing is still of utmost importance, but you can see that the root system did really well in the two years and a good cleanup won't do it any harm whatsoever. Within reason, everything within reason, of course. I could split it, but I'm not going to. I don't need more orchids on the shelf. As the pots are getting bigger, I really have to consider my space. So I want to get into here a little bit more. No fear. Root tips, old roots, everything. No fear, just go for it. On this, again, this cross, I'm talking about Roy Tokonaga or anything related. You can see that the root system is super vigorous and you can really go for it and I'm going to have a hard time cleaning up the lecker that's left. Let's just say, fight fire with fire. Being very careful with this one got me absolutely nowhere except for hours of anxiety and stress every time I heard a snap, a crackle and a pop. And all that while I had plenty of time watching the Ryder Cup. So, all right, I still have something dead over here.
And that should be it for this intervention. I'm going to go and rinse it under the tap and see if I can get rid of more of these inner bits and I'll be right back. All right, very quickly, get rid of my nasty tap water. I don't want that stuff on these roots for long. So this is just plain RO water, rinsing the roots off. Get rid of my awful, awful tap water. And that looks about ready to go. There we are. Much better, much cleaner. A bit more air in there. Bigger pot, growing root tips, all that good stuff. And yes, some will have been compromised. Some, well, you saw how I went at it. So a lot will have been compromised, but based on what I know about this orchid now, it doesn't matter. You can be ever so careful. It's just going to cause you anxiety. Right, that's you. Now, I'm going to repot this immediately because of the climate. And despite being radical on the roots, it doesn't mean that, I, that they're not sensitive to the outside elements. They've just been through a significant amount of trauma. So let's get you situated. A sap. And I'm using two microfibers in this case. Bigger pot. It had two microfibers and I'm not going to change that. Okay. New support. If I were not to make any notes, I would know which ones were repotted in 2020 because they have white ones, but that doesn't always work out that way. <laughs> and then I'm just filling up as per usual with Lekka. Lekka only. And I don't, I have two directions of growth. So this one is just going into the middle. And I'm going to fill her, pot her up a little bit lower, fill up with Lekka, and every time I pull her up a little bit, pat and pull up. This way the Lekka will disperse more evenly. As I'm doing this, I'm actually holding the orchid and moving her and pushing her with my hands into position so she doesn't dislodge from where I wanted her initially. So I'm not just holding on to her lightly. This orchid can really take a good grip. You see, really hold on. So as much as the roots are delicate and like glass in when handling them the orchid itself is not those canes are thin on the bottom but there's nothing delicate about them and that should be her situated or him situated for another two years and if not then i'm all the more happy for it because that means i've got triple the growth instead of double for next year which is absolutely fine by me there's also other things that once you've disturbed an orchid to this degree its growing habit might change even more and suddenly you've got another direction of growth that's why i have her in the middle just raise her up a teeny bit more let's not get too ahead of ourselves and that's it what a difference one repot makes from when I first got her. My goodness, I had anxiety. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I had anxiety. In goes the label. Now, again, the label is always where my support is. And the support doesn't appear to be that big, but the point is not to, for me with these growths, is not to have a support that supports any spikes or blooms. 
This support is only there if growing using the direction of light does nothing and then I can pull a growth in if I need to. That's all it's there for. It doesn't need to take up much horizontal space. Now wipe my hands with my bleach cloth so we can go and attack the next one. Now these roots have been really, really split and broken hard. One thing is cutting a root system and one thing is ripping it. So in this case, I'm only putting in plain RO water. With my epidendrums, it was chop, 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 clean cuts. So they got some fertilized water, not a big deal. This was a rip and that shreds roots, which is not conducive, I think, for immediate fertilizing. She's had her sustenance, so she should be fine for a week. Next one, let's have a look. Now this one doesn't have a support in it. I'm trying to figure out why. Did I run out of wire at some point or what? At this point, I can't really remember. This is the one I bought for my daughter because of my daughter's name in it. I would like to have an original Alexandre, but I couldn't find one. And this pot is also quite rock hard. Potted up in February of 2019. So a year and a half and it's rock hard. Got to be done. If it's rock hard, that to me is a signal that it's time to rejuvenate. So look at this. Not too shabby. Notoria types and semi-hydro. I think it answers any questions speaks for itself. So I'm not going to wiggle around here too much. Whatever falls off, falls off. This one is not a radical, radical thing. All the roots are okay. But for purposes of demonstration, I think it would be interesting to go at the base or not. Yeah, that answers a few questions. Something to be aware of, this happens, the roots will grow into the microfiber. I just pull them out in order to reuse the microfiber. And yes, there are growing roots in here and everything. But again, for the purpose and the health of the orchid, I will not skimp on doing what I'm doing now. If the orchid was in dire straits and needed a repot, then I would be uber careful and I would be potting her up and filling around and quickly putting her back on the shelf, pretending nothing ever happened. But in this case, we don't have to do that. We can have a closer look. And I like what I'm seeing. And I hope that answers some questions regarding the Toria types in semi-hydro. I think this is a go. There's not much else to do here. Let's get rid of that long one. It was loose anyway. These roots are not as sensitive as the Roy Tokonaga. They do have a bit of a give to them, but they're, but they're not glass-like. So that's a good thing to note as well. Again, this is a Dendrobium alexandrae crossed with Polysema. So these roots are a little bit tougher, which is nice to know. There's no need to be timid about it. I've got two new growths coming, so they will need more room for their roots. But basically, that will be it. 
There was only one microfiber in it before. It's a bigger pot. There's going to be much more room. I'm giving it two this time. As it's also growing, I want to accommodate those needs. This one is a drinker as well. Now the question is, do I want to support in there or not? And the answer is yes. Right, I have my support in, I have a bottom layer of leka in, but you see, it's too high. So, that's coming out. And again, I have growing directions. But here's one coming out the back. This was the front lead right here. So I'm putting this up in the middle. With these dendrobiums, they can do anything at any time, anywhere. That still feels a bit high. I hardly have any lecker on the bottom. No, I don't like it. Now I can play. I don't like things and I, I know I'm in kind of a hurry because it's warm. But I don't, I'd rather mess about with it now than do some kind of a compromise and be annoyed afterwards. But now we can. Now this one having new growth, I would be obviously I'm more careful with where I'm grabbing. So I'm taking the older canes and holding them while I shake. But that's all there is to this one. So questions answered, yes, I think we achieved that, whoops. There we go, a little bit too radical, maybe, Nina. Questions answered on this one, yes. Victoria, dendrobiums, love, semi-hydro, makes my life Easy to know that my orchids can take this inorganic media and do well. So, the tag. There we go. The rag. And seeing as this one was very, very limited in handling of the roots, it is growing as well. It's getting fertilized water. I still have a lot of orchids to take care of before I get to October. I have a lot of rock solid textures in my pots. Very difficult to squeeze them. So I will be filming the majority of, of what's coming. I'm going to try and keep it as basic as possible, but we do have some videos now that are a reference to certain types of orchids that actually do well in LECA, which is semi-hydro. I choose the self-watering in some cases, but the concept is the same. So here are Latoria type dendrobiums, an example. And I hope that if you are considering this method for these orchids, that you know that it can be done. And then after two years, have a little have a little fiddle on your pots and see how much needs to be done or if they need to be taken out and rejuvenated. That is my advice. That is how I do it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. Great timing with those inquiries there, Mary G. And I hope that this video was of some help to everybody. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. Stay safe. Bye.